This morning we're fishing in Stewart, Florida and we're pre-fishing the Rocky Barra Bounty fishing tournament out of Australia and we are looking for bait. Hooked up on a fish. We are still looking for bait this morning. Um, we're not having too much luck. It's very tough conditions out here today. It's blowing 20 knots once again, and it was blowing 20 knots the other day in Marathon, Florida, and um, we just found a school of mullet getting blown up on by some jack crevals, I'm pretty sure, and uh, just threw out a line, and I hooked up on a fish. So I'm reeling it in, and um, I got my bait, my uh, cast net ready to go because I wanted to throw on the bait, but I also wanted to get a quick cast in and ended up hooking a fish. So let's So for the next two days, we're going to be fishing in Stewart, and we're going to be fishing for snook and jack crevals. So this is a good sign. We've already found the target species that we're looking for, and you can actually see right here, he literally bent my hooks out. Look at my treble hook. Bent out. So this is a good sign. We're going to catch a lot of jacks today, it seems like, and um, they put up a great fight, so it's always a good time. I loaded up on a bunch of finger mullet. That's snook candy. Not a whole lot of fun, especially when you're not catching any fish and you're just getting soaked and you're freezing and there's no sun and it's windy and a combination of all these things and a little tiny flash boat. You just get soaked out here. So I'm just really hoping the wind dies down one of these days, but uh, not today. This flash boat is, is as dry as a jet ski. I think I've been on jet skis that are drier. What do you think, Sizzle? I haven't really been on a jet ski, but... <laughs> it's pretty wet. I but, feel like uh, I'm offshore at a marathon Florida two days ago. <laughs> it's not quite that bad. Yes. But alright, we're going to try and catch a fish now. Right. Jump. Jump. Grim. Jump. Woo! Oh, you got to get him. <laughs> Trying to catch this snook, I just uh, threw my bait right by a dock and just got popped by a snook. And amazingly, I was able to get him out of the dock. Hey baby, hey baby. Trying to help you. Oh, he's spitting up a huge fish. Whoa. Little aggressive. I'm pretty sure this is underslot fish. Uh, wow, you want to see what he spit up? Look at this thing. Look at that. Look at that monster bait that just fell out of his mouth. That was not what I was using. And I believe that's like some form of a little snapper or something. Um, and I was just using a live finger mullet and casted it out. I hooked him in the nose so I wanted him to swim up. I didn't want him to swim down. And this snook hit it right under that dock over there and literally jumped on the other side of the dock. And I yanked him out of the dock with my, um, my uh, airwave, <laughs> my Tsunami Airwave Elite Series the heavy duty rod that I have um, and I was able to get him out thank God um, because this fish would have broke me off and he jumped once on the other side of the dock then he came under the dock wrapped around the piling and I was able to swim him out through the piling the right way and um, able to land the fish so that was a little bit of a hectic experience there here we go circle hook coming out all right, so we measured this fish. This, this fish is about 25 inches. He's not a keeper, he's an underslot. You can only keep snook between 28 and 32 inches here where we live. And um, I just wanted to give you guys, just so you know when, you're, when you do catch fish, this is catch fish or snook or any fish in general, but you wanna hold fish like this. You wanna support their underbelly. You don't wanna hold a snook vertically and just holding them by the um, gills plate right here and by the lips. It's not good for them. Actually, they eventually die if you just hold them vertically like that. I'm not going to do it. Um, I have to release, release this fish for you guys, but this is a proper way to hold a fish. Always support their underbelly. They're made for the water and they're made to be in the water. So when you hold them like that, that's an uncomfortable pressure. Um, so this is a gorgeous fish. This is the right fish we're looking for. Tomorrow when we fish the Rocky Barra Bounty, we know where the snook are now. So we're going to catch, hopefully, a ton of big fish tomorrow. Oh, we got a screamer. Oh, 
Oh. All right, now we're catching some fish. We gotta leave it about 20 minutes because Darcy has to do some homework. But uh, I just want to let you know, you know, what we're doing out here. And, and you know, we talked about it yesterday a little bit. But you know, we're throwing uh, mullets. Darcy's just freelining it. I have mine on a bobber, but uh, you know, I haven't caught any fish yet. And uh, just throwing it right up on this on, on any structure, you know, under docks, on the sea walls. And you know, this is fishing, so you just got to move around until you catch the fish. So we've just got, we actually just got another bite right here. And uh, so we're doing, you know, pretty good. We, we took some time to find a bait, but it's very important, you know, to find a bait. And maybe she's catching a fish now. But anyway, so it took about three hours to find a bait. The wind's been blowing, but now we have know where the bait is, so we can get that out of the way faster tomorrow, hopefully. And then, um, then we'll be all set. Thumbs up. All right, wrapping up. It's noon, and we got some rain coming. Darcy's gonna get to school and some homework. Look at that. All right, we're gonna hightail it out of here. What do you think, Sizzle? Time to go. Slack tide, catching no fish. I got a ton of homework to do, presentation due tonight, so um, as much as I would like to stay and fish, I can't, so school duties. <laughs> so that tide's pretty high, huh? craziest thing I think I've ever seen but that that super high tide ended up going into the parking lot parking lot by quite a few feet and um, like literally like six inches of water in the parking lot there's a school mullet like right there and I wish we just waited until the actual full tide and I could have catch those mullet right there in the parking lot All right, Lee J Productions on YouTube want to know about my rod racks. Uh, you know, this is, I'm not a fancy pants. This is the kind of the ghetto rack. This is just a two by, uh, a two by eight. And these are PVC pipes just screwed in here. And that's it. Sometimes it even falls over. I wouldn't recommend doing this. I mean, it works for me, but you can make the whole thing out of PVC and you can buy nice metal ones uh, online also. I'm going to show you my inside PVC racks really quick. Just uh, so you know what I did there too, because it's a common, it's a, it's a similar situation. All right, I'm going. Oh, I need a coffee. I'm like exhausted. I'm gonna pass out in class. I need to go get an espresso. And then I gotta go. Two. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you soon. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, Darcy had to go to school. She's very busy. She ran home, did a bunch of homework, and then she just ran out of the house. So uh, yeah, we had a great time uh, pre-fishing today in Stewart. We found the bait, so that's really one of the main points of it. We found some snook, and uh, tomorrow we're gonna be at it uh, bright and early, and we're gonna catch a bunch of fish in, in the Rocky Barra Bounty. Register them in the app, and uh, have a great time. Can't wait. Uh, until tomorrow, uh, follow your dreams, and keep on catching.